Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more geography. Now, we're on to San Marino. San Marino, once again, don't really have much of a clue, and so we're going to check it out. Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button below, and we'll jump right into the video. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Do -do -do. I just finished doing a video on Universal Yum South Korea. Had some uh, tasty treats, which I'm actually snacking on right now. So I definitely checked that video video out. If it's out by the time you see this, it's probably still not. If you're seeing this video when it first airs, it might not be out yet. But if it's like the next day, it'll definitely be out. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out. It's on, it's on premiere mode right now. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna do, 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 jump into this. All right, three, two, one, bam. Imagine you're a dude running away from some guy trying to kill you. You escape pirates. You start a new life on the beach. Then, just when beach life is going great, some crazy lady you never met claims that you her baby daddy and you just left without paying no damn child support. So you run away to the mountains. You build a fortress. Then a bunch of other runaways in a similar situation to yours join you and you become a community. In a very butchered, condensed format, that's basically how this place became a country. Welcome to what? the world's best hiding spot, keeping it down low, San Marino. I don't even know where San Marino is, so it must be a pretty good hiding spot. <laughs> It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Welcome to the fifth smallest country in the world, the oldest sovereign country in the world, with the oldest constitution, and the smallest republic. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, you guys have less land area, but you also have over 166,000 square miles of ocean territory, so... Mm. Oh, well, shit, I actually won this round. Congrats, now, Ru. <laughs> oh, and as you guys know, this video was shot during the COVID-19 pandemic times, so in compliance with social distancing practices, this video was shot in my office. Caleb and Jillian live here, so obviously they are quarantining with me. They can be in these videos. Art is one of my closest neighbors. He is within walking distance, so he'll be a regular. Also, we are limiting our guest host to one a week, and this time, this week, it will be Hannah. How you doing, Whee! Hannah? What is that you are holding on to? And this week on Geography Now, we have merch. And uh, where can you get all this at, Hannah? Geographynow.com. I'm gonna leave the shirt on, I think it's good. Should we sure. match the whole time? If, if you want, sure, yeah. Listen guys, we take huge precautions with face masks, we have hand sanitizer, and we film all these segments in different time slots so we are avoiding crowds. Speaking of which, Hannah, you need some hand sanitizer, there you go. This yeah, is yeah. how Paul pays me. And I'm probably gonna steal some toilet paper on this my way out. Anyway, San Marino, started by one guy, St. Marinus, or San Marino, and it grew into the small, hard to find microstate that it how crazy was the toilet paper thing? So since they're bringing it up, like, that was crazy. I mean, there's never, you couldn't find toilet paper anywhere. People are freaking out, toilet paper. And of course, like, a month later, there's so much toilet paper because no one needs it. So everyone was stocked up, stocked up on toilet paper for, like, the next, like, six months. But that was just definitely a crazy time. Anyway. It is <laughs> One guy, St. Marinus, or San Marino, and it grew into the small, hard-to-find microstate that it is today. Let's find it on the globe now, shall we? San Marino, sometimes called the Most Serene Republic, is kind of like a miracle country. It was made from a bunch of people trying to escape persecution. And like, they've survived almost two millennia of dodging almost every major battle and war because the aggressors were like, Aww. You're so adorable and non-threatening. You know what, go ahead, I don't need to attack. Stay independent. In any case, they've held it together and kept their sovereignty locked down in the hills. And here's where they are. First of all, the country is completely landlocked within the country of Italy, straddling oh. the borders of the Emilia-Romagna and Marche regions of Italy. Okay, so apparently I have, at Bromwick is, okay, I, I've definitely seen that there before. I just, I guess just lost my mind because, uh, yeah. How small it was. Wow. And good job, you guys. Like, didn't let Italy, like, swallow you whole. So, pretty impressive. 
completely landlocked within the country of Italy, straddling the borders of the Emilia-Romagna and Marche regions of Italy. At only 24 square miles or 61 square kilometers, they are the third smallest country in Europe after the Vatican and Monaco and have no former border control with Italy. The country is divided into nine municipalities or castelli, meaning castles, and the small capital with only about 4,000 people named, like the country, San Marino, is located in the San Marino municipality. The capital sits on the western slope of the highest point of the country with incredibly wow. narrow hairpin turn roadways and a ridge trail that goes to the other two famous towers of San Marino. If you want to get there without driving, a good alternative would be taking the aerial cableway that starts in Borgo Maggiore at the bottom and goes up 166 meters to the top. As a landlocked nation, of course they have no seaports. They do have one incredibly small private airstrip in Toraccia, but for Just seeing the capital there, that's freaking amazing, man. That looks really cool, man. Like an awesome place to live on. I mean, I guess driving the on that like cliffs that side right there i mean pretty i can see being pretty scary you know at first and everything but and then the castles on top man like the visual of that and that was impressive man they would they use like google maps for that that's sweet but definitely i'm already impressed and i already want to go there and visit those castles and just i don't know go up on that slope and check things out cool stuff seaports. They do have one incredibly small private airstrip in Toraccia, but for people wanting to take commercial flights, everything must be done through Rimini's Federico Fellini International, about 15 kilometers away on the coast in Rimini, Italy. This airport works with San Marino and does actually have a granted customs for San Marino that visitors can use and report to. Oh. From there, the only way in is by road on one of the many entrances from all sides of the surrounding Italian border. The busiest one being the Italian SS-72 highway into Dogana. Keep in mind, the country actually used to be even smaller, but in 1320, the community of Chiesa Nuova joined, and in 1463, four other communities joined, Faitano, Fiorentino, Monte Giardino, and Serravale. Since then, the border has not changed, and they've stayed the same size from then on. Small country, but it's got everything it needs. So by now, you're probably wondering. Oh. So, yeah. so yeah, obviously it must be a pretty cool country if other, you know, regions or whatnot want to join in, so yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Same size from then on. Small country, but it's got everything it needs. So by now, you're probably wondering. Okay, for real though, how on earth did they avoid not getting absorbed by Italy? Well, for one, as the story goes, St. Marinus, or San Marino, was a simple Christian stonemason from the island of Rab in the Dalmatian coast. Back in those days, the Roman emperors were actively killing Christians, and Diocletian had a target on Dalmatia. San Marino ran to Rimini, started a whole new life on the beach, then some crazy lady, or ladies, depending on which version of the story you heard, claimed he was their estranged husband that left them. Annoyed by this, he ran to the mountains and built a monastery as a hermit. From there, other persecuted Christians Christians heard of this mountain safe haven and they began to congregate there and built a fort. Originally, all this land belonged to Lady Felicita, a Roman noblewoman. One day her son got sick and Saint Marinus supposedly had the gift of healing people and healed her son. In gratitude, she gave the mountain to him and his community. So according to the story, that's basically how the country started. Before he died though, Saint Marinus's last words to his people were, uh, I leave you free from both men. Wait, what? Most people assume he was referencing the Pope and the Emperor. This was kind of like the inspirational driving force that led the people of San Marino to maintain their sovereignty. Eventually, they wrote their constitution, the oldest one on earth, the Legge Statue Republicae Sancti Marini, which is actually six books written in Latin in the 16th century. Yeah, San Marino, it's not just a community of farmers in the random hills. It's a community driven by the inspiration of a saint that encouraged them to hold on to the reins of their own domain. And it worked! Anyway, if you decide to visit San Marino, it's one of the top places to check out the Basilica of San Marino, the Liberty Square and statue, the Sacello di San Marino. If you want collector's coins or stamps on your passport, go to the tourism office, the Crossbow Quarry Cavern, Monte Ceretto Park and Adventure Park, the Museum of Vampires and Werewolves, what? Old Cervale Castle, the Passage of Witches, the Museum of Weapons. You know I'm going to go to that Werewolves and Vampires Museum, man. Museum of Weapons? Like, come on now. Look at that, man. Uh, how many people, if you live there, how many people have taken their photo in front of the werewolf? I bet you have millions of people have over time, man. That, that, that's what you, that's a good, like, window display to get people in there.
Pyres and werewolves, old Cervale castle, the passage of witches, the museum of weapons in Chesta, the torture museum, the museum of curiosities, the ancient arms museum, the San Francis museum, the state museum, and the most notable site of the country, the Torre Guaita, and her two sisters, Tower Chesta and the smallest Montale, which Montale is not open to the public. And everywhere you go in the country, you see statues and tributes to San Marino. Yeah, put it on another, another place on the list of countries to go to when I tour Europe. Uh, eventually, I'm probably going to have to like take some places off this list because I have so many so far. But I think I can do it. Himself. See how many you can find. So yeah, as you can see, San Marino is a myriad of quirky and traditional sites. No idea why they have a vampire museum, but it works. Let them have their fun. In any case, within those 23 square miles, 61 square kilometers, they still have quite a few natural sites. Which brings us to... Now, we've done microstates on this channel before, and when you have a very limited amount of space, you're probably gonna have to find ways to make money that don't require massive farm fields. San Marino has their own way of playing the game. First of all, the country is entirely mountainous, located in the Apennine mountain chain that creates the spine of the Italian peninsula extending all the way north to south. This mountain chain is essentially part of the smaller thrust fault lines that push from the Adriatic lithosphere, or microplate, which explains why sometimes minor tremors and earthquakes might occur, but nothing too serious. As mentioned in the center, where the capital lies, is the limestone mass and highest point of the country, Mount Titano, at about 740 meters high. From these hills flow many small creeks and rivers, like the Ausa, Marano, and Fiumicello rivers, and bisecting the country in the southwest side is the appropriately named San Marino River. The country does not have any major natural inland bodies of water. The closest thing would probably be Lago de Faitano, a small artificial body of water used for sport fishing near the border of the Faitano area. Otherwise, as you can see in the valleys, farms and ranches dominate the remainder of the landscape. Fun fact, because of Mount Titano, sometimes San Marino is also called the Titanic Republic. San Marino is a country that knows how to handle things. They have no external debt, they actually have a budget surplus, and they get somewhere around 3.2 million tourists a year, about a hundred times their entire population. And despite agriculture not being a real principal industry, I mean, with their limited area, about three quarters of their land is given to permanent agriculture, and about 17% of their land is arable. And with that, it is now time for my triple shot of espresso break. Usually, no comes in, but Noah obviously can't be here because we can only have one guest host, Hannah. So that means Art is gonna have to fill in for today. Yeah. Hey guys. Now for San Marino, the real money comes from three main sources. Banking and finance, the largest company in the country, is Agricola, as well as business and tourism. About half the economy in itself is based on tourism, making about a quarter of the GDP. And sales tax is actually half of what it is in Italy. This is why so many people love coming here for shopping, especially stamp and coin enthusiasts for the rare collectible San Marino Lira discontinued after switching to the Euro, even though they're not even part of the EU. In in addition, if you go to the outskirts along the country's borders, you'll often see massive warehouses or factories owned by outside companies. This is because San Marino only taxes corporate profit at 19%, 5% capital gains, and 13% withholding tax interest. Contrast that with Italy's 24%, which is higher than the EU's average around 22%. Hmm. I like this guy. In addition, San Marino is known to have some quirky items that are actually otherwise illegal to buy outside the country, like guns and weaponry, like swords and crossbows, things that can kill you. Why am I thinking about murder? <laughs> because we just talked about <laughs> weapons that could murder you. Oh, that's right. San Marino actually has the highest rate of car ownership in the world, and it is the only country with more cars than people. Are okay. they rich over there? It was like Monaco. Wow. Remember we did the Monaco country? Yeah. Um, not as rich as Monaco, though. Otherwise, within the limited hills and cliffs, you can still find some pretty cool wildlife. And with that, we are going to go to Gary Harlow. He's actually not here right now, so uh -huh. what do we have, Paul? Hannah's going to have to fill in this time. Um, I need a hat. Um, I got this thing from Morocco. San Marino is a tiny nation, but by no means devoid of nature. I shouldn't be doing this accent. No, it's terrible, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> For one, you'll find animals that are common throughout <laughs> Italy and Southern Europe. Their abundance of grasslands, rivers, and creeks give a home to mammals like cross foxes, hedgehogs, horseshoe bats, otters, and the least weasel, known as the smallest oh. carnivore on the planet. Don't let the little guy's red coat with white belly and small, cute, stubby snout fool you. When it's time for mating season, they have some of the most violent courtships documented in the mammal world. In addition, about 96 species of birds can be found migrating and nesting, everything from swans, European honey buzzards, peregrine falcons, barn owls, and spotted woodpeckers. And that's all for Gary Harlow. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Hannah Harlow, or uh, whatever your name is for this segment. I don't, I honestly don't care. And now we finish off this segment as we always do with what? With f f food, baby, food. Ooh, you like food art? Yeah, I do. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you might suspect, San Marino's cuisine is very similar to that of Italy's. Of course, you will find pasta and pizza around every corner. But they do have their own specialties as well. Capoletti, Pasatelli, Ciambella, Bustrengo, San Marino-style lasagna, and Pentalacchia liquor. And these cakes are sold everywhere, but they're just kind of like a, you know, gimmick snack thing for tourists. And many might consider the national dish piadina. <laughs> that looks pretty good. It looks like an Italian go. taco. Yes, mm. even a small country can can have their own charm and flair. Like the people in their culture, which brings us to... Thank you for filling in, Art. Here, um, of course. hand sanitizer, uh, wash your hands. All right, you're... Not that dirty, but... You always will be to me. By the way, the people here are called Samaranese. There's no N, not San Marinese. Samaranese, two M's. Got it? Good. Throughout history, the Samaritans have had a saying, Noti a noi, ignoti agli altri. Know ourselves, but unknown to others. The Samaritans mm. are kind of like proud of their distinct identity, rooted in unfamiliarity. In any case, this is how you break down the population. The country is made up of about 34,000 people and is the fifth smallest country in population on earth. The country is predominantly Samaritans at about 86%, whereas the remaining population at about 4,800 inhabitants, or about 14% of the country, are foreign born, mostly from Italy and Romania, as well as other parts of Europe. Keep in mind, there are about 12,000 Samaritans nationals in diaspora, mostly in Italy, France, and the USA. They use the Euro as their currency. They use the types C, F, and L plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, when it comes to identity, although yes, the national language of San Marino is Italian, and many Samaritans people have Italian ancestry, regardless, do not call these people Italians. They are very proud of their Samaritans heritage. I mean, when you're part of an exclusive club with less people than the maximum capacity during peak season at Disneyland, you're kind of special. By the way, as a Californian, yeah. I gotta say, Disneyland is so overrated. Don't even bother with that place. Six Flags, way better. Anyway, for what it's worth, being Samaritans comes with a lot of unique traditions and customs. For one, the majority of the country, at somewhere around 97%, claim to be affiliated with the Catholic Church. I mean, shocker, they were founded by a saint. However, there is no Episcopal See in San Marino. And they actually fall under the Diocese of Montefeltro in Italy. If you don't know what that is, basically the Catholic Church kind of like organizes their churches in worldwide districts called dioceses. It's confusing. Even I don't get it. And I actually have an uncle who's a Franciscan friar under the Capuchin order. Anywha! San Marino is also noted for their unique government system. They are one of only three diarchies in the world, as in countries that have two official heads of state. And they've been doing it since 1243. These heads of state are known as captain regents. They are chosen by council members that are voted in every five years. The captain regents must be at least 25 years old and their terms last only six months which makes it the shortest head of state term limit on wow. earth they are allowed to have unlimited terms afterwards but they have to wait three years until they can be re-elected and this also means san marino has had the highest number of female heads of i'm just curious to every six months is there always like i don't know i guess political banners or like lawn signs all over the place because you know you know when election time comes around like the advertising and political stuff is just everywhere, you know? And if it's every six months, you think it would be nonstop. So I'm just curious for those who live there or have been there, do you see any of that? Or maybe it might not even be allowed there, you know? Uh, but just let me know of state out of any country in the world. Anyway, what makes San Marino distinct culturally? Well, that brings us to Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. All right, guys, it is good to be back. San Marino is a country that definitely honors its traditional medieval side. In July, during the Revocation Festival, you can see the flag throwing performances everywhere. And when a new set of captain regents are voted in in either April or October, they have the investor ceremony. The largest national festival would probably be on September 3rd, though, the National Feast of San Marino. Samaritan's people are also known for kind of being weapon enthusiasts, hence why they have so many weapon shops. Their specialty? The crossbow. Oh, that's so cool. They even have a crossbow yes. corps of about 80 members that train and dress up in medieval clothing and perform regularly at festivals year-round. For cool. sports, this is where things get a little interesting. In Europe, whenever San Marino plays football or soccer, it's kind of like, Yes! 
Yeah! But not for the reasons you'd think. I am so gonna win money by betting against them! See, their national soccer slash football team debuted in 1990, and since then has only won one game against Liechtenstein in 2004. This makes them officially the worst team, not only in Europe, but in the whole world. Their starting lineups often have... I mean, is it really that surprising when you look at the population? I mean, you have a small pool of people to kind of, you know, grab from as far as, uh, you know, putting a team together. So obviously now you're going to say that all their soccer players are not really professional. They're probably just like, you know, regular workers, you know. So I guess that is, you know, it'd be no obviously normal. I guess you're not, they're not big league guys, right? So, hmm. It still would be cool, though. I mean, at least you're still included in, I guess, right, you know the soccer and stuff like that, right? Yeah, the part partici participation mail, right? Few actual professional players, and they even had an accountant as their goalie once. However, what they lack in footwork, they make up in arm work. Their baseball team is much better. They've been champions in Italy four times, wow. won two Italian Cups, and three European Championship Leagues. In addition, they have a strong passion for motorcycle racing and often perform very well at Grand Prix events, mostly practicing at the Rimini Coast Racetrack. And finally, some Maronese people are lovers of classical art and music. Me too. For classic music, these two composers are highly regarded figures. You know what I just realized? This is kind of the music segment. I just took over Keith's segment. I think I won the feud. Keith, haha. -ha. I guess that's it for you now, Hannah. Um, social distancing push. I got the mic. <laughs> All right, and with that, it's time for the history segment. We already kind of explained the origins of this country, so let's just kind of skip forward to the 15th century. 1463, the country gains its last new territories, which are the current borders. 1503, it was taken over by this guy for about six months. 1543, this dude tried to take over, but got lost in fog. Occupied again in 1739 by the papal governor of Ravenna. Napoleonic years, Napoleon actually kind of liked San Marino and offered to extend their territory, but they declined. During the Union years, Garibaldi and his wife took refuge in San Marino. He promised they could stay independent after Italy became united. World War I, World War II, they tried to stay as neutral as possible but still got bombed. They actually became communist for a few years. They joined the UN, OECD, and the Council of Europe. Tourism and sales of cheesy souvenirs skyrocket. And here we are today. Some of the most notable and famous people of this country that you guys suggested I mention include composer, playwright, and bishop Francesco Maria Marini, 60s and 70s icon pop star Little Tony, Olympian Alessandra Parelli, four-time Eurovision singer Valentina Moneta, Captain Regent Assunta Tina Maloney, these soccer players, Marco Macina, Simone Pacini, and Davide Simoncini, Grand Prix motorcyclists, Manuel Poggiali, and Alex De Angelis. So there you go. Not bad for a country that has fewer people than Bob Saget has had family members on his TV career. And speaking of family, that brings us to... <laughs> Now, as we kind of already explained, much of San Marino's very existence depended greatly on their ability to avoid and get away from conflict. They've always had to kind of talk their way out of trouble. I like what Samaranese geography Diego says. He says, I think this is maybe the most beautiful thing about us, the victory of words over arms. That's cool, I like that. But that doesn't mean San Marino is a total hermit. They definitely roll with their crew. For one, they have three embassies, including the Military Order of Malta, which is not actually a real country, but it kind of is, but that's a whole other story. And and eight honorary consulates within their country, and over 85 non-resident embassies and consulates abroad. In addition, they actually have a very interesting connection to all the other microstates of Europe, like Andorra, Liechtenstein, Monaco, and Malta. All these countries take part in the games of smaller states of Europe, which also include larger small states like Luxembourg, Cyprus, Montenegro, and Iceland. Even the Vatican is invited and set to possibly take part for the first time in 2021. Generally, wow. other Catholic nations like to nod their heads at San Marino in respect when they see the pride and and perseverance of a tenacious little guy that outlasted all of them. Croatia especially has a soft spot since the founder of San Marino was from Rob Island off their Dalmatian coast, which interestingly enough, people from Poland and Russia are very frequent visitors, so much to the point where many shopkeepers in San Marino are actually able to communicate in these languages, which pleases wow. the customers. Even more interesting, Iran has close ties to San Marino, business-wise at least, as Iran-based airlines that head to Europe often stop over in Rimini Airport under the San Marino Authority side because 
San Marino is one of the only few European countries that has a refueling agreement with Iran. When it comes to their best friends, however, it's really no shocker, Italy usually ranks number one. Italians, especially from the Romagna region, and the Samaritans are essentially one family. They are culturally similar, they share many of the same values, people often commute to each other's countries for work and school, intermarriages are very common, and overall, they get each other the best. In conclusion, San Marino kind of started out as a country from a dude that wanted to escape constant trouble. Little did he know that 1700 years later, millions of people would be visiting every year, lining up to check out wacky vampire museums and buying guns and crossbows from the money they made from betting against their soccer football team. Oh, San Marino. Keeping a low profile in the coolest way possible. Stay tuned. Saltome and Principe is coming up next. Wow. <laughs> Well, that is definitely a cool story. That country definitely has a cool story to go along with it. With you know, just a cool country in general, and uh, it's a very small country, but it's definitely a lot of stuff compacted in there. And it was just kind of really cool to kind of see. You know, you guys got a lot going on, and apparently, apparently, everyone from around the world uh, wants you know likes to visit there and check it out, and me included. So, anyways, there you go, guys. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button below, and. Uh, I'll catch you guys in uh, future videos. Appreciate you guys watching. You guys have a good night. And yeah, I'm out of here.